Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Mary, our Queen, to those who may be visiting in person or joining us through our webcast. For those who are visiting in person, our Cathedral Guide will be available in the front of the church immediately after Mass to answer your questions or to give you a brief tour. Our second collection today is for the Cathedral Preservation Trust. All of today's songs are listed on the hymn boards. Also listed is the Gloria, which we will not be singing. Today's reading may be found at number 1092. Our celebrant today is Archbishop William E. Laurie, assisted by Deacon Fritz Bauerschmidt. Our opening hymn is number 504, The King Shall Come as Morning Dawns, number 504. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. On this, the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the Church's year of grace, let us ask for the blessing to begin our lives of faith anew, 
by celebrating these mysteries with worthiness and joy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. That is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I live. Paths 
of the Lord our kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God. And as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth, nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent 
and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ, with Christmas less than a month away, the seasonal festivities have begun. But just when we want to lighten our mood and forget our troubles, we are confronted today with Jesus' terrifying description of the end of the world. The sun and moon will be darkened and the powers of heaven shaken. We are told the people will die in fright, die in fright in anticipation of these events that herald the second coming of Christ in all his might and glory. The message here is to prepare ourselves not only to celebrate Christmas, but indeed for that moment when you and I will stand before Christ as our judge. We are to be vigilant. We are to be blameless in holiness, done forever with self-indulgence. Not exactly the world's recipe for a holly jolly Christmas. But if we take that all-important second look at today's scripture readings, we will find in them the path to celebrating a most joyous Christmas, not because everything is going our way, nor because our troubles are out of sight, but rather because our hearts will truly be ready to welcome the Redeemer anew, our Redeemer who was born 2,000 years ago as a little child in Bethlehem, our Redeemer who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We find that path to real Christmas joy by making good use of the season of Advent so that our hearts, mine and yours, will be truly free to encounter Christ at his birth more deeply than ever. While we may prefer the tenderness of that first Christmas night to the power and majesty of Christ's second coming, let us remember that the two comings, the two advents of Christ are interconnected. Jesus was born into the world, not just to comfort us, but to redeem us of our sins. Christ will come again in glory to complete his work of redemption and to gather in his harvest. By rightly preparing our hearts to celebrate Jesus' first coming, his incarnation, we are at the same time preparing our hearts for Jesus' second coming, that glorious coming for which we pray at each and every Mass. Yet, if Jesus were to come again today, or if we were to die today, would we, would we really be ready to encounter, to face, the one who is our Redeemer and our Judge, or be confident that Christ would find our lives pleasing. And what of our family members and our loved ones, and yes, our fellow Christians? 
Today's gospel alerts us never to presume that we are good enough for heaven. Indeed, Jesus himself warns us not to let our hearts become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness, nor to let the cares and anxieties of life overwhelm our love for God and our love for others. Instead, Jesus urges us to be vigilant, to pray, so that we will have the strength and courage to endure whatever lies ahead, whether it be our own final tribulations or those of the world, or simply whatever the challenges of the year 2022 will bring us. Well, friends, at this point, it might seem as if we're back to square one. Just when we would like to forget our troubles and at least bracket our cares, the church reminds us that prayer, vigilance, and growth in virtue are the path to freedom and joy. But if you're tempted to think that all of this is okay for Carthusian monks, but not for us, then think of this. Think of how we often feel when the Christmas holidays are over. After Christmas, many people are down in the dumps, as we say, depressed, not just because there are bills to pay, but because life's bleakness hits with full force. So it's worth asking what might be lacking in our seasonal celebrations. In fact, in today's gospel, Jesus has pegged what often goes wrong at this time of year, and it's this. We indulge our desires, and still we feel more anxious than usual. The Lord's plan for Advent is different and better. His plan invites us to spend more time in prayer, to listen to God's word, to participate actively in Holy Mass, to confess our sins, to spend time with the Lord in the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The Lord calls us not only to avoid the excesses of holiday parties, but indeed all the excesses and all the illicit pleasures that our commercial culture thrusts upon us. Some of those excesses consist in too much of a good thing, like food, but others consist in illegitimate pleasures that are the enemies of the human spirit, self-indulgences that produce not inner joy and peace, but rather apathy and self-pity, self-indulgences that hinder us from addressing creatively our problems and worries. Instead of claiming our freedom by dulling our senses, the Lord invites us this Advent to entrust to him our cares and worries. Instead of becoming spiritually flabbier while wallowing in our worries, Jesus advises us to get up and to engage in spiritual exercises, like athletes who prepare to compete by working out every day the saints worked out spiritually, and that's why they had the strength to evangelize the world and to serve the poor with an amazing love. So too with us. If we pray like a champion, we will love like a champion. In fact, in today's reading from 1 Thessalonians, 
St. Paul rounds out for us the Lord's Advent plan when he urges us to strengthen our hearts by growing in love for one another. Love for others is how we can lead lives pleasing in God's sight and stand before the judge without fear, blameless in holiness. And so the point of Advent is not just to forget our worries or to bracket our cares. Instead, the Lord offers you and me genuine freedom from sin and from every form of distress, the very thing we pray to be delivered from at each and every Mass, just before we receive our Lord, his body and blood, in Holy Communion. The outgrowth, the outcome of an avid life of prayer and our sharing in the sacraments ought to be that we find ourselves relating to God and to one another in a new and better way as we pray fervently and share wholeheartedly in the church's sacramental life, we encounter Christ more and more deeply. And as he takes center stage in our hearts, as that happens and our relationship with him grows, the Lord gives us freedom, freedom to entrust to him our sins, our shame, our weakness, our anxiety. Freed from those shackles, we're able to give ourselves in love more fully to our spouses, our families, our co-workers, especially the poor. We no longer labor under servile fear but rather in the freedom of joy and truth, we rejoice. Then we can pray as St. Teresa of Avila prayed when she wrote, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you. All things are passing, God is unchanging. That, my friends, is real freedom. That, my friends, is the true Christmas spirit. After Jesus describes the signs importance that signal the end of the world, he says to us, when these things begin to happen, stand up erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. If indeed, you and I have attained the true freedom of God's children. We will not run away on that day or hide or cravenly try to blame others. Instead, we will run forth to meet the Christ with our righteous deeds, confident that we will be gathered at his right hand and be made worthy of his heavenly kingdom. May you truly have a blessed Advent. And now let us profess our holy Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now asking for the grace to prepare our hearts to receive our Christ anew, let us offer our prayers and petitions. For the Church of God, as she awaits the day of Christ's return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guiding spirit to assist those discerning vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world that waits to know the peace of Christ, especially for places scarred by violence and injustice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer fear and anxiety, for the unemployed and the homeless, for refugees and prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, especially those suffering in this pandemic. And for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, that together with Mary our Queen and all the saints, they may see the glory of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in our flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the altar is number 511, Lift Up Your Heads. Again, that's number 511.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Corpus Christi, custodian, may and be done. Our communion song is number 508, Jesus, Hope of the World, again 508.
bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. We go forth singing number 702. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior. 702.